How do you know if a decision you're making is gonna be a simple, small infraction like a ticket or something huge like a felon? Ignorance of the laws and the defense. Listen today to Immigration Wednesdays, where we're gonna talk about a real life crime and how that might affect the people involved. Hi, I'm Jeff Peek. I'm an attorney here at the Peek and Tone Law Firm. And in the last couple of weeks, we had a massive freeze here in Central Texas. A lot of pipes burst in some homes, including our business. And we had a carpet get wet. So in order to dry this carpet, we put it outside of our business to let it dry over a couple days time. And something interesting happened. Somebody decided to steal this rug, this nice carpet that was uh, several hundreds of dollars worth. Now, you could think, how stupid are you to leave it outside? But honestly, who thought somebody would steal a giant wet carpet? Uh, but we thought this is an interesting, t interesting teaching moment for people to know, how could this change the lives of the people, the thieves who decided to steal this carpet? Little did they know, we have them on camera. So we actually watch this crime in action and decide the stupidity of their decision to do this. All right, so first thing you have to ask yourself when you're deciding to steal something is, what kind of crime is this? We all know stealing's wrong, right? Whether you take a piece of gum from the store or you take somebody's car, it's just the value of the object, right? So that's generally what determines if something is gonna be a ticket, uh, a class A or B misdemeanor, or a felony. There's something in Texas called the standard value ladder, where they actually just divide based on the value of the object stolen, whether or not you're committing a crime. But there's other factors in the law that can increase the punishment. Like if you are operating with more than one person, you can be charged with a conspiracy, and that could elevate the crime. But interesting in this case is where are you stealing it from? Is it a public place? Is it a store? Uh, is it a house? Or is it a building? Well, interestingly enough, the law office here much, pretty much looks like a house, so somebody could be thinking their house, but we have a sign outside, so they probably understood this is a place of business. So what you're going to see here on the video as we watch it roll behind me is a car pull up, and we're going to see the individuals get out. So over here on the side, you can see the, the rug, the carpet's there, there's a sign on the door. Now, but what's interesting is we have an entryway area here, decking, okay? Um, clearly, you can tell this is, it's outside, it's part, it's not on the curb, it's not a gray area, it's clearly something we are doing, we left it there intentionally, rugs don't just get, get put up on a hoist. But regardless of whether they thought our intent was, it's clearly inside the property, it's clearly on the front space. Now, Texas criminal law has an interesting word they use called curtilage. You probably don't hear that word anywhere but in a criminal courthouse or a criminal uh, case law because it has to do with what is actually part of the property. Are they actually entering this, this building or this residence in order to commit this theft? Uh, well, a lot of people say, no, they're outside, but curtilage says the outside areas, including the entryway, and this goes all the way up to the Supreme Court ruling this, is part of a habitation or part of a building. So how does that affect it? Instead of just having to worry about the value ladder, let's say this is a thousand dollar rug. Instead of thinking, okay, well that's only gonna be a class A misdemeanor. Ah, but now you're coming into somebody's property and now you're committing the crime potentially of burglary of a building, burglary of a habitation, depending on whether it's a building or a habitation. If it's a habitation, somebody's home, now you're up to a second degree felony. If it's a building, you're still at a state jail felony. That's the difference between committing a small thing and a big thing. That's the difference between changing your life between maybe having a case dismissed and having a felony on your record. And if you think that's a small thing, let me tell you, that that's a life changer. There's a huge number of employers in this world who will never give you a job with a felony arrest or conviction on your record, especially one that's called a crime of moral turpitude. And if you are an immigrant, let me tell you, that could be the difference between deportation, potentially never being, being an aggravated felony, depending on the value, and you're, so you're really treading in dangerous waters here as an immigrant or as a citizen. Either way, you can have problems. But I just wanted to show you, so you don't think you're safe uh, or it's just gonna be a small thing. Once you're entering somebody's property, you're in another realm, and I don't even have to get into it. It's another video altogether saying the rules of self-defense and the rules of defense of personal property in Texas are. Somebody could come out and shoot you and kill you and legally do so for stealing this crime. Now, obviously I would never do that, uh, they, but they don't know that. They don't know who owns this building or owns this house. And so you have to be very careful. What they thought was probably a simple act, they're actually committing a felony here in Texas. If they're immigrants, they're committing a deportable offense. And depending on how the case plays out in court, you know, the question is, is that worth it for a wet, used, you know, rug, carpet, even though it was nice, even though it was really costly, is that really the risk you wanna take for your life? You gotta think about these things. And if you're gonna be stupid enough to steal from other people, maybe not do it when they're recording you and you can, they can see your license plate. So.
just a little other thing we thought we'd share with you. That's something to teach from the real world. Obviously, nobody's planning on ever to commit crimes, but it's interesting to know how small decisions can in small miscalculations can turn into big consequences for people. Anyways, thank you for listening. I hope your pipes didn't burst, and I hope you have a great week. We'll see you next week.